This presentation is part three in our series on using the Dell Cross Savant electromagnetic software to study an intervehicular communication system. In part one of this video series, we use Savant to examine the installed performance of a blade antenna on our sedan. We found that the single element omnidirectional coverage was best achieved by mounting it on the center of the top of the passenger compartment. In the part two video, we use Savant to show how the antenna's installed performance was affected by another nearby vehicle on the roadway. We animated this scenario to demonstrate how the pattern changes as a van approaches and passes our sedan on the roadway, showing both shadowing and multipath reinforcement. Now, instead of looking at far field radiation pattern performance, we'll consider a link analysis. Savant can compute the antenna-to-antenna -antenna coupling from the input of our transmit antenna to the output of our receive antenna, a metric of great interest to communication systems engineers. We'll consider two dynamic scenarios and use Savant to simulate and animate the transmitter-to-receiver link coupling as the delivery van moves through the environment. In the first example, the delivery van will follow path one, pulling alongside and passing both sedans. The sedans in this case are separated by 19 meters. In a path two scenario, the delivery van will pull into the right lane between the two cars and then pull back into the left lane to pass our receiver. The sedans in this path two scenario are separated by 23 meters to give our delivery van a bit more room to maneuver. Here's an animation of the results from a series of savant simulations. In this uh, scenario, we run the van through the environment, and the red curve on the uh, display below shows us the antenna-to-antenna -antenna coupling for the two sedans alone on the roadway without the presence of the delivery van. The value is constant because the cars aren't moving relative to one another. The blue curve shows us the antenna coupling as the delivery van moves through the scene. There's about a 5 dB variability on the curve until the delivery van moves through a position about halfway between the sedans and the antenna coupling curve has a fair amount of noise due to reflections off the van. The antenna coupling varies by about 20 dB with a high of around minus 70 dB and a low of about minus 90. The maxima in the coupling curves are very likely due to multipath scattering off of the side of the van. Now we look at the second case, where the delivery van moves between our sedans before passing the lead sedan. In this scenario, the sedans are 23 meters apart. In this case, we see about minus 78 dB of antenna coupling without the presence of the van, that is, the red curve. Again, the addition of the van to the scenario adds some noise to the antenna coupling curve, that's the blue curve, as the van travels through the environment. Watch what happens to the antenna coupling when the received sedan ends up in the shadow of the van. The antenna coupling drops a full 10 dB below the previous minimum when the van was between the two stands. You may have noticed the fact that the multipath reinforcement in this case at the midpoint of the van's travel is essentially eliminated, so the antenna coupling stays below minus 75 dB. That's in contrast to the previous scenario where we saw the link increase. The dynamic range of the antenna coupling for this scenario is about 25 dB. This will show up as a signal strength modulation in practice. Well, as we've shown in this video series on intervehicle communication, Savant provides a very efficient tool for studying the antenna placement on an electrically large vehicle, for computing the near fields around the antenna and its platform, and for computing antenna-to-antenna -antenna coupling, even in dynamic environments. As the van passed the sedans, Savant predicted an antenna coupling variation on the order of 20 dB. And with a lane change by the van between the cars, Savant demonstrated antenna coupling variation of 25 dB. These simulations demonstrate the dynamic nature of, of transmitter-to-receiver antenna coupling for vehicles on the roadway and the nature in which these couplings can vary with other vehicles in the environment. Each animation that we showed involved about 300 separate Savant electromagnetic simulations. Simulations for each animation required about seven hours on a quad-core laptop with a standard NVIDIA graphics adapter and GPU. Using higher-end hardware with an MPI formulation for clusters could drop the complete simulation cycle to less than an hour. 
Finally, the largest simulation considered for all the results we've shown in the video series is under 350 megabytes. You don't need exotic or expensive hardware for productive use of Savant. Thank you for viewing this Dell Cross Technologies presentation. For more information, feel free to visit us on the site at www.dellcross.com. For North American sales and support, contact Dell Cross Technologies or our agent, CST of America Incorporated. And outside North America, please contact CST AG.